This is the all new Debian 13 Trixie and it's packed with incredible new features and some of the biggest upgrades we have seen in years. We are talking a massive jump to GNOME 48, the brand new Plasma 6.3 with the super cool tiling and a lightning fast kernel upgrade. Your Linux experience is about to be transformed. Debian 13 also introduces critical features like native RISC-V support, groundbreaking security enhancement, and a fix for the infamous Y2K38 apocalypse bug. Debian 13 also enables TMPFS out of the box and that gives us insane performance improvements. I've been playing around with Debian 13 Trixie as soon as the release candidate started rolling out and honestly, I've been very impressed. So let's jump right in and have a look at the 11 things that make Debian 13 an absolute game changer. Alright, let's start off with the biggest change. Debian 13 ships with GNOME 48 as the default desktop environment and this is a significant upgrade from GNOME 43 in Debian 12. Yeah, we are jumping 5 major versions of the GNOME desktop. And this is going to give us some big features and refinements. The new version is way more refined, cleaner and just feels better to use. Compared to GNOME on Debian 12, the new GNOME here brings notification stacking, where notifications from the same application get grouped together and this makes the notifications drawer look tidier. Then in the settings, we get a new digital well-being section which allows you to track your screen time and set limits for healthier computing habits. This one I really liked. I'm very conscious about my screen time and this really helps in this matter. People with supported displays can try out high dynamic range mode here. This really boosts the visual quality, color depth and contrast to the next level. It's just the initial introduction but this makes the screen look incredible. Also on the Valent front, a lot of things have been improved. There's a lot more here. For example, in the performance department, GNOME 48 also brings dynamic triple frame buffering technology which significantly improves the desktop animation and effect fluidity especially on mid-range and low-end hardware, making the GNOME desktop feel incredibly smooth. GNOME 48 here comes as a major leap for Debian stable users. If you thought GNOME was a big update, you should see what KDE Plasma users are getting. Debian 12 gave us Plasma 5.27, but 13 is bringing Plasma 6.3. That's a huge generational shift. First of all, the user interface feels completely different between these two versions. The desktop is powered by Qt 6 now and it defaults to Wayland. It has a modern floating panel and Plasma just feels way more premium here. I think Plasma users are going to feel an even bigger jump than GNOME users here. And maybe you will have to relearn a few things. Let's jump into it. You get a new built-in tiling mechanism. Press the super button or meta plus T to bring up the tiling window. Here you can drag and drop applications into a grid while holding down shift to tile them. You can customize this any way you want. This is so cool, trust me. This really takes your productivity to the next level. Fractional scaling has been improved and you also get cave-in zoom and grid overlay. The widgets that you use on your desktop, now they can be made translucent. You know that mildly see-through effect that makes it feel like it's made of glass. You get HDR enhancements and tone mapping here too. And in the performance section, we get dynamic triple buffering as well. In addition, explicit GPU sync completely removes the flickering and tearing issues that some people face on NVIDIA hardware. There's a lot more here. And yeah, you're going to feel a huge difference when you jump to Debian 13 with KDE Plasma. Every major stable version of Debian gets its code name from the characters in Toy Story. Debian 13 is the Dinosaur Trixie, which is a triceratops in Toy Story. But we don't just stop at the code name. Debian 13 Trixie also features a new theme called Ceratopsian. Now this theme is applied to the bootloader, the login screens and the default background wallpaper. Not the GTK or application theme though. This theme too is inspired by Trixie from Toy Story. It's designed by Alice Cooper and this was chosen by a public poll. I think there were a total of 6 submissions. This looks fresh. Okay, I'm gonna be honest here. I'm not really a fan of how Debian looks out of the box and I don't even think that's a high priority for Debian. They want to give you a stable system and let you take it from there. They don't really care about how colorful it is out of the box. This version is the same too. I'm definitely gonna slap on a new wallpaper here, something more colorful. Every new version of Debian stable brings a refresh set of packages that modernize the experience. I'm using the word modernize very loosely here because even the newest version of Debian, let's say, will be stable. Yeah, let's stick with the word stable. Anyway, Debian 13 Trixie comes with a vast amount of software in its repositories compared to its older version, Bookworm. Now we get over 59,000 packages with more than 
11,000 new packages being added into the repository. Over 42,000 packages, that's approximately 72% of all the packages in Bookworm have been updated to newer versions. So you can expect newer features, better performance and overall a more contemporary experience from all the software you use. In addition, more than 9,000 packages, that's 16% of Debian 12's package base have been removed for different reasons. You know things like some packages being unmaintained or superseded and these packages will be marked as obsolete in app stores. Even with this updated set, we will be lagging significantly behind packages from distros such as Ubuntu or Fedora. But these packages guarantee one thing and it's stability. They undergo extensive testing and when you install something on Debian stable, you can be sure that it's going to work absolutely completely fine. LibreOffice will be jumping to version 25, Python we get version 3.13, GCC 14.2, GIMP 3, Rust 1.85 and a lot more. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my course Linux Mastery Express. I've designed this course to level up your Linux skills very quickly. With this course, you'll get so comfortable using the terminal commands that your friends will think you're a Linux wizard. You'll get perfect with the most used, most useful commands and also learn advanced things like using the vEditor and shell scripting as well. Linux Mastery Express, link in the description, do check it out. On number 5, we are having a look at the kernel powering the whole thing. We get Linux 6.12 LTS version here and this comes with a solid collection of performance updates, stability improvements and features compared to the last version. We got 6.1 LTS in Debian 12. Let's talk about the performance updates that this kernel brings because there are a couple of big ones here. Firstly, we get the real-time preempt RT patch here. This has been in the works for almost two decades now. This reduces latencies and boosts up the responsiveness. And I'm not just talking about the desktop usage. This patch here lets the system be used in robotics and industries where real-time responsiveness is super important. Another huge performance update that this kernel brings is it uses the new EEVDF scheduler. And this has been shown to boost the responsiveness of tasks, especially in CPU intensive loads like gaming, compiling, and make the computer run buttery smooth. On the hardware support side, the kernel adds support for Intel's upcoming Panther Lake and Diamond Rapid CPU, making Debian 13 ready for the next-gen chips out of the box. Support for Intel XC2 and Battle Image GPUs is also enabled via the i915 driver, improving compatibility and performance on newer Intel graphics. Wi-Fi chips, storage controllers and network hardware support have all been expanded, delivering a better out-of-the-box experience across desktops and laptops. So Debian 13 will run and run better on a vastly expanded set of hardware compared to the last version, especially newly released laptops and processors. Now let's talk about a big change under the hood that makes a big difference in real-world performance, especially for day-to-day -day computer usage. Debian 13 mounts both TMP and WAR TMP as TMPFS by default on new installations. That means your temporary files are now stored in RAM instead of on disk. I always do this manually and the difference in speed on certain tasks has been absolutely phenomenal. Let me give you an example. When you install a package or update your system, the updates are downloaded into your slash TMP folder. Then they are unpacked and installed. Because hard drives and even SSDs are much slower than RAM, this process can take some time. But when those updates are downloaded directly into RAM because slash TMP is mounted as TMPFS, the whole process of unpacking and installing becomes exponentially faster. Okay, let's talk about the technical details. This TMPFS setup is enabled out of the box and by default, it can use up to 50% of system's total RAM. But memory is only used when files are actually created in TMP. That 50% isn't reserved upfront. If you want, you can customize this by running system control edit tmp.mount as root and specify options like size is equal to 2G. If you have already set up your own tmpfs manually via slash etc fstab file, your configuration will take precedence over this default. Now mounting tmp as tmpfs works great in 95% of cases, especially if you have 8GB of RAM or more. But in rare cases, apps like Android Studio might need to download a huge amount of data into slash tmp. If you've got 8GB or 16GB of RAM, it's probably not a problem. But if you run into issues, you can always disable TMPFS entirely. This might seem like a small change, but trust me, it brings a huge speed boost to everyday computing workflows. Next up, we have some massive news. Debian 13 officially supports the RISC-V architecture. Why is this such big news? 
RISC-V is an open standards architecture. Think of it like open source software, but for hardware. When you build a system with RISC-V, you don't need to pay licensing fees to anybody, and you can infinitely modify the system to your preference. Debian is going to complement these open systems in a huge way. At the moment, we are getting RISC-V 64 instruction set profile support only, with support for some sci-fi, hi-fi boards, as well as emulation support for development. Now, it should be noted that while official, the RISC-V journey for Debian is still in a very initial stage. The performance is not that great right now, and newer, faster RISC-V hardware are not yet fully compatible with the Debian kernel. There's still a lot of work to be done in this regard. But from a future point of view, Debian supporting RISC-V architecture is extremely important. Okay, this one's interesting. Debian 13 completes the massive transition to 64-bit time t format across all supported architectures except legacy i386, which means it's now officially immune to the infamous year 2038 bug. This bug is kind of like the famous Y2K, you kids won't remember that, but it was kind of big deal back in the day. Now this is called the Y2K38 bug and it's worse for Unix systems. It would have caused serious failures when storing timestamps beyond January 2038. By switching to 64-bit time t, Debian is making sure your OS won't silently break down a decade from now. I know that's far, but still, this is a big thing. And this was a massive engineering lift. Thousands of packages had to be rebuilt, and the fact that Debian pulled it off in a stable way shows just how much invisible effort goes into keeping this OS rock solid for the future. Because Debian is not in the news like other distros, we actually underestimate how much work goes into Debian. Alright, let's talk about the security enhancements in Debian 13 because a lot has changed and it's all good news. First off, Debian now includes Intel's CET on supported CPUs and ARM's PAC and BTI on ARM64 which helps block ROP, COP and JOP attacks. Okay, okay, I know that's a lot of fancy terms. Basically, this is a hardware level security feature that prevents attackers from hijacking running programs. This is an extra level of security built directly into the CPU. We also get support for newer Linux security models like IPE and optional landlock sandboxing, while app armor profiles have been tightened up. System D services now run with more restricted permissions out of the box, and there's a handy new tool called Debian Security Support to help you keep track of which packages get security updates. All of these make Debian 13 a much harder target out of the box. Debian 13 also cleans up legacy support under the hood. It officially drops support for MIPS architecture. Both MIPS EL and MIPS 64 EL are gone from the archive. Also, i386 is no longer a regular architecture. You won't find a dedicated installer or kernel for it anymore. It's now kept on purely for compatibility, mainly to support running 32-bit apps on 64-bit systems through multi-arch. I don't think any of you use this, so let's move on. Debian 13 brings many cool improvements to apt, the package management tool here. Firstly, the new app now supports Z standard compression, which gives us faster package installation and reduces CPU churn during updates. The new app is also much more intelligent when handling dependency resolution. The parallel download mechanism has also been improved here to give us faster updates. One big thing here is the app sources format has been modernized to deb822 format. Although the old sources file in slash etsy slash app is still there, it's recommended that you use a new format. For this, you need to run the sudo apt modernize sources command. The new format of redefining sources is more structured and is also more readable now. And when you're installing or updating, you'll get a warning if there isn't enough free space in the package download folder. Security policies have also been beefed up here, and I did get a few warnings when I tried enabling third-party repositories that were not compliant with these new policies. That's intended behavior. Alright, there you have it people. An absolutely massive update that is Debian 13 Trixie. Debian is the mother of some of the most important Linux distributions. Every new version of Debian stable has an undeniable effect on the world of Linux, as a lot of things are derived from Debian stable. I think with Debian 13 Trixie, we are off to a good jump. And people who daily drive Debian are going to find the new one very enjoyable and modern as well. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this deep dive with Debian 13 and if you did, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and also leave me a big thumbs up. And if you are interested in learning up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to zero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, 
check out the top 5 hottest lightweight Linux distros for hyper performance in 2025. It's got some really cool ones, so definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.